In 8.1c, we're going to identify and explain margin of error. Remember we said a confidence interval is taking your point estimate plus or minus the margin of error. So what is the margin of error? Um, a good way of saying it, it's how close our estimate is to the unknown parameter in repeated random sampling. Some things you have to be cautious about your margin of error though is that uh, it does not account for bias in the data. So what was bias in the data in our collection process? Refer back to chapter 4. In chapter 4 we talked about uh, when could we actually encounter, encounter bias. We had bias in choosing our sample. Remember if you uh, create a sample poorly it's going to give you bad information already up front and be biased. Remember a voluntary sample is not a good sampling method. A convenient sample was not a good sampling method. And you have to be careful that you don't have under coverage in your sample. Are you really covering everyone? Well, after you've created your sample and you carry that sampling method out, you could have bias after you choose the sample. Remember, as you conduct it, you might have some bias in the responses people give you, in that there is no response from some people when you try. Or maybe the actual response they give you is biased. They're lying to you. But also be careful about bias and how you word the question because you want to eliminate then in control for that margin of error as much as you can. Now here we have the Gallup poll published back in January of 2013, a 95% confidence interval for the true proportion of American adults who support the death penalty. They said it was 63% plus or minus 4%. Uh, this estimate was based on a random sample of 1,038 American adults. Interpret the interval in context. Here's how we would interpret it. To interpret this interval, we would say we are 95% confident that the interval from 59 to 67, I just subtracted 4 and added 4, captures the true proportion. I will tell you, you need to know how to interpret a confidence interval in context. Memorize this format. You're going to hear it from me over and over again. The one word you never ever want to use with a confidence interval is probability. It is not the probability. Do not say that the probability is 95%. The interval has our mu or has our population. Um, it is not probability and I will guarantee you or close to it let me say I'm 95% confident on the actual AP exam, you will probably see a multiple choice question asking you to define it. You're going to see them use probability for definition of confidence interval, and it's wrong. Now, let's talk about confidence level. How do you interpret the confidence level on this? Again, this is one that is just worth memorizing. Um, this here again is confidence interval, and it's a good way to just default and always say it. Confidence level, on the other hand, is this. If many samples are taken and confidence intervals are constructed, about 95% of the confidence intervals will capture the true parameter. Now, let's say we weren't talking about a 95% confidence interval, but a 98% confidence interval. You would just adjust this. You know, if we took many, many samples, then 98% of them would capture the true parameter. You'd also adjust your confidence uh, interval by changing this also. In our problem, what is the margin of error? Well, they told us the margin of error was plus or minus uh, 4%. And this accounts for variability due only to random selection or assignment. Uh, remember, if there's variability that we can control, like how we design the study um, in our elements of control from Chapter 4, that should not be in the margin of error. This margin of error, again, will only account for that random selection component that is just going to happen because that's how studies work. The other element to keep in mind here is that our margin of error does not account for the sampling bias. Remember, however you structured your study from Chapter 4 um, is where that sampling bias is hopefully controlled as much as it can be.